TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for the very first episode of 2010 and uh, as you can probably already tell you probably know what I'm about to review here okay so this my friends is a, is a wine that I've been waiting for ever since uh, it was announced way back in what 2007 was well, a 2007 vintage um, so uh, this is the 2007 Vaniac Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, as you can tell, you know I'm I'm totally going old school. How many of you that actually watched that show have this one? Yeah. Anyway, um, so first of all, before I get into it, uh, in case anyone you know is kind of like you know you're being all fanboyish. Yeah, I am a little bit, but. We are going to taste this wine. We are going to give it a score, or I am. I'm going to give it a score. I'm going to review it. Now, when I first bought the wine, <clears throat> like I bought it, you know, I didn't buy the Futures, because at the time I really couldn't afford, I think it was 35 bucks for a bottle, uh, and that was way out of my price range, <laughs> way out of my budget. And um, so you could buy this off Futures, I think it was $35 a bottle. Now it retails for... Um, Forty-four ninety-eight. So let's get a little close-up of it. Two thousand seven. Blah blah blah. Okay, so it's for forty-four dollars um, ninety-eight cents. At least that's what I paid for it. Or did I pay forty? No, I paid forty-four. I paid that. Um, it is a blend of eighty-three percent Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, and they also give you where they're from. From Suskal Beat Bench. Uh, Twenty. Well, twenty-four point nine percent is from Suskal Bench. Uh, 24.9% from Young Inglewood and 16.6% from Godspeed and 16.6% from Carrefour Vineyards. So those are the vineyards that the Cabernet Sauvignon came from. These are all these are all made from this is made from Crush Pad, by the way. So um, if you've been a longtime watcher of the show, you'll know that Cindy from Passaggio Wines did the same thing. Her stuff's from Crush Pad. She also works at Crush Pad too. Um, all right, so after that, you have 10% Merlot, 4% Petit Verdot, and 3 Bernay Cabernet Franc. And uh, those of you that are longtime viewers of uh, Wine Library TV will know that Gary loves Petit Verdot. All right, so um, so yes, we are going. I'm going to try this. And uh, when I bought the wine, actually went to Wine Library and bought the wine. Um, there really weren't any reviews. I mean, Gary did taste it. He didn't give it a review necessarily. He didn't score it. But, um, uh, and then some people on the forums, most people seem to have given it positive reviews. There were a couple people that didn't seem to be a fan of it. Uh, and I found one blog post of a guy that brought a bottle as soon as he got it, which was about a week prior to the actual episode going up for Wine Library. Brought it to a restaurant uh, for BYOB, uh, and he did enjoy it. Now, since then, who knows how many reviews are out there. I haven't looked because I don't want to have too much more influence other than you know, that I think I'm going to like the wine. All right, so with that said, as you can tell, I've already poured the wine. So the wine's been open a couple hours now. Uh, it's been in glass for about an hour. Poor man's decanter, because um, I have yet to still get a decanter. So for those of you that think I'm giving this a little bit extra special treatment or, un or preferential treatment, yeah, you could say that. Um, but what the Chef Enough the Pop episode taught me was... Uh, and not saying this is the same level as that, but you know we're talking you know more expensive wines. Um, but the Chef of the Pop, if I ever have something like that, I definitely need to decant it because after I after I reviewed it and was kind of like you know I gave it an eighty what eighty eighty nine, and it was really more because I, I knew what it should be like. Um, six hours later, we we were drinking it, left it open in the bottle. Uh, six hours later. Much better, much more approachable, softer. So um, I wanted to give this as 
best uh, a showing as possible because the last thing I want to do is uh, give this a poor rating. But if I don't like it, I'll flat out tell you I don't like it. I mean, the champagnes that are, I'm sorry, the sparkling wines that are over here to my left that you can't see. I mean, you saw the scores I gave those. All right, so let's check it out. All right, so I immediately get some dark red fruits and chocolate. Uh, and yes, I watched his review, and I don't remember everything he said about it, so hopefully if I'm repeating it, it's not because I'm just regurgitating what he said or what anyone else has said. And I don't even know if it has... No, it doesn't. Okay. But definitely um, some fruitiness, like maybe chocolate-covered cherries or... I don't even think I started my timer. <laughs> Not like this was ever going to be really a seven-minute show. All right, so um, which means I also need to go back to my notes. Oh, no, actually, no, because I already told you everything that was note-wise. Maybe some dark cherries and maybe a little bit of strawberry with some chocolate. Maybe a hint of earth. But pleasant nose. Night, I like the nose. Um, I think it's very approachable. I think it's, you know, a good nose. All right, I gotta tell you, I like the wine. So Gary, good job, um, Crush Pad, great job. Um, I'm getting a lot of stuff out of this. All right, so initially, what I get is kind of that dusty, earthy um, flavors to it. But then as soon as that's done, which is it's it's very, very short that I get that. Um, you really get the fruit. And it's it's almost like exactly what I taste off of the off of the, the bouquet. You get those red fruits, darker red fruits, and chocolate. Um, it's a tasty wine. This is a, a wine that um, obviously, and he even mentioned it, is made to appeal to a broad spectrum of people. Uh, if you watch his show, you'll know that his palate while he doesn't, while he doesn't hate these wines, he actually enjoys these wines. He likes, you know, he likes green peppers and and green and earth and, and stink and all that. He didn't make a wine like that because he's a businessman. Trust me, he's a businessman. Um, he made something that's going to sell and should sell well. This is, this is really good. Um, Score-wise, let's just get right to it. Score. I'm not going to say it's the best wine I've ever had, um, though I think it's, I think it ranks up there with some 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 good wines that I've had on the show. Um, I'm going to give it. Man, I don't want to sound like I'm just some some fanboy. I'm going to give it. A 92. Let's see if this works. Let's see if I actually remember to do what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> Probably won't. Um, I really do like this wine. I think it's a, I think it's a, I think it's a well-made wine. It's tasty. Um, it's a wine you could drink on its own. Um, you could definitely pair it up with. I would say you, probably, you, you pair it with some with some steaks. Um, maybe even, maybe some. Pork chop, maybe maybe some pork chop action. Uh, probably not game, like any like probably not like veal or anything like that. And you could maybe <laughs> I 
Gary, you little stinker. You snuck in some pepper in there. And you didn't even mention it on your show. It's because it's, it's just now coming through. Just a hint. Just a hint of like jalapeno. A little green pepper. A hint at the very end. You're sneaky. Anyway, um, you got that in there for yourself. I know you did. But um, you might be able to do some barbecue with it, but you probably wouldn't want... And, and let me just go over the tannins. Tannins are really light, though I'm starting to get a little dryness right here on the bottom of my gums. Um, so it's not, it's not like... It's not, it's not going to kill you. Um, you could maybe do this with a little bit of barbecue, but I can see some some steaks, but but I would say probably maybe a steak with maybe some sauces on it, um, and I'm not talking just a one, but like you know sauces that are you know that that are like not like a Bernays sauce, but, but stuff like that. You know where a restaurant puts sauces on their steak. Not hey, can I have some Worcestershire? You know whatever. I mean, but I wouldn't say maybe plain steak. Maybe like a you know what you could you could do this like with a Jack Daniels barbecue sauce type of, you know, barbecue steak. A steak with a barbecue sauce. You could probably pair it up with that. Um, anyway, if you can afford it at 45 bucks, I'd say buy some. Um, I'm actually interested in maybe buying a couple more just to have at the house um, and to drink. Um, part of it is the fanboyism. Um, though uh, I do need to order that. I have to order that today or tomorrow. Just saying. Though, uh, uh, just because of a special deal. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I definitely like it. Gary, congratulations. Uh, I think you made a, a wine that, that will definitely sell well, uh, will appeal to a broad spectrum of people. Um, great first effort. Uh, you know, I, I do, totally enjoy it. Totally enjoy it. And uh, I look forward to getting maybe a couple more bottles. And um, that's about it. Yeah, that greenness is starting to sneak through a little bit more. Um, if you could decant this for a couple hours, I think it would be really great. I'm actually buying a decanter just to get another, just uh, when I get another bottle of wine. Maybe just buy a decanter. Maybe we can buy it from you, Gary. Um, let's see. Not that I can't get decanter to San Antonio. Dude, trust me. Every time I go to Specs or or Gabriel's now, uh, just <laughs> the decanters are right there going, buy me. I'm like, yeah, I will eventually. Um, I guess that's going to be it. Uh, I think this is a great first show. Okay. Uh, that was loud. Uh, I think this is going to be a great, this was a great first show. Um, hopefully we'll kick off some great stuff for the rest of the year. I know I'm still working on some things, you know, that, that haven't appeared on the website uh, or that are on the website, but I'm a little behind on. But um, I guess that's going to be it. This is Monday's episode. Uh, Wednesday I should have... I forgot what I'm going to have. I don't even know what I'm going to have. I might, if I remember, I might buy Texas Longhorn wine. We'll see. Because my Longhorns playing on Thursday, and I'll probably talk a lot about it Wednesday, but got to beat Alabama, and that's it. We'll see everybody again on Wednesday.